I haven't seen you all in a while and I figured I probably owed you some FaceTime. We've been super busy here on the farm. It, winter's coming, Thanksgiving's in a couple days. Uh, we had a few nice days, so I was trying to get some stuff wrapped up and now it's uh, back in the, in the low 30s. It's going to be not much better than that probably going forward. Maybe 40s here and there, but for the most part, winter's coming. Uh, so I've been building this deck over here and I'll show you that real quick. So it's a 10 by 12 deck we're putting on the front of the house and we're going to put railings on it. It's going to be um, the PVC vinyl railings. There'll be a 4x4 four four post with the PVC around them and then you get the, the caps and the steps aren't finished but this is that uh, composite decking here. So it looks like wood uh, but it's PVC and I'll never have to replace it. And what we did is we wrapped all the, the joists with joist tape and then we got the ice and water shield so we got some clapboards to put back on and got a new front door uh, also a new back door that looks just like it in addition i'm going to show you some inside later but uh, that last window down there we ripped the ceiling out so it was all lath and plaster and sheetrock and I took it down right down to the beams and ripped that all out So I had to make trim to go all around because obviously the, the um, horsehair plaster and lath stopped and then there was nothing for a few few inches and then there was the beam so I had to make custom trim all the way around and obviously the beams are hand hewn with an axe so none are the same so you have to make all the trim pretty much uh, custom, you can't just cookie cutter it. So I'll show you some of that, we've been painting it uh, and then I got to do the floor, it's a pumpkin pine floor so we have to get that cleaned down and then put some poly on it to keep the, the pumpkin and here in the barn uh, I got a lot going on at night I've been disconnecting the, the water every night now eventually this system's going to freeze up and it's not going to be able to be used I'll be able to use the hydrant but not not the uh, the plumbing through the barn so I have to blow air through it essentially what's been happening is I've been disconnecting this and then I drain the system every night and it, it mostly drains I'd say 90% drains but there's a shady spot out behind the barn I didn't get all the leaves sucked up I got most of them but supposedly the leaves are good for bees in the spring and uh, the bees are still alive so them. And I just went around and checked all the electric fencing. So they're in their little winter pasture. And the sheep and the cows share this area right here. The, the morning sun, and it's usually pretty nice for the most part right there. So once, once the snow comes and we pile up off the roof, it's pretty dangerous to come down around that way. So I use this way to get down here, which I'll take you through right now. So this is where I keep the straw. I use this in the chicken coops and I've been using some of it for the calves. So let's go take a look at the calves. I'll show you them. I sent the, the big ones away. They were 
quite a bit more heavy this year than last year. So there's a little ball and a little heifer. So I'm going to fix him as soon as he's ready to be fixed. And I had to take what I could get, so I don't usually take heifers, but a little heifer this year, and I'm not going to breed her. I'm just going to raise her like I do the others and send her. Although it's, it's sometimes it's hard to send the girls because, well, that's not what they're for, right? And uh, she's kind of cute. Obviously, she has long eyelashes, and she's friendly. She was just born friendly. Like he said, his name's Cleveland. That's what he told me. And she told me her name is Clara. Uh, so down here's where I had the turkeys. And I've just put these temporary panels in. These were the gates that used to be for the stalls down there before I took them out. And I saved them because I thought they'd be handy. So these are just movable panels that I use uh, some chain on. And I chain them to make whatever configuration I want. And here's a, another one there. And what I had done here is uh, I had one here and then one here and then I had each of the calves in the room with a light when they were first um, brought here because they were only like a few days old but now they don't need the light anymore pretty well they're eating grain and you can see that they need some more but I want to hook uh, an eye bolt in here with a carabiner so they can have their heated bucket for water and uh, all the old chickens are gone these are the replacements, so they're all here. Access to that hallway. Now this here, if you remember, was all stalls. So there was there was one here, one here, one here. And then the hallway went around, and you accessed it through this door, which is now a closet and a stairway to the haymow because I didn't have a stairway before; I just had a ladder. So it's, it's dark in here. Now uh, we just put the shovels and stuff and then I cut another hole and put the stairway up which comes in behind there and now I don't have to have the middle blocked with stairs but right now I've got it blocked with decking and uh, so we built this wall we built a new door for the feed room shed this year and this is a feed bunk this is kind of temporary uh, it's temporary permanent I call it so it's movable if I don't like it there and I think I want to move something uh, I kind of want to continue the roof line because it's high enough and just come out a little bit uh, maybe to here or so and then I can feed them through here now what these guys keep doing is they keep pulling no, they didn't do it today but usually they keep pulling the float out so we've got Henry Romeo's over there he's the goat uh, so supposedly her name's going to be Clara, the little new lamb. And then there's Violet. I think she's pregnant. Um, Luna and the ram that I kept to do his business, but he's going to be heading down the road here next month. Uh, actually, January 6th is when he goes. So i got to make a place for Luna and Violet in the barn to get them a place to have lambs because they're looking like they're going to be having lambs at some point. So you'll notice that most of the old farm malls are gone. Uh, I've got one in the garage and I've got my brother, so I'll, I'll never sell that one. Uh, so I've got Mahindra, which, uh, you know, I've written a lot of, made a lot of videos on Mahindra tractors and, and it's, it, it uh, goes well, it has a few issues, but I definitely feel like that tractor when I'm on it, it's anchored to the ground. And then the little one I used to get under the barn, and it's just kind of like my overgrown garden tractor. And then my new deer I bought, which is 3039R. It's a kind of the deluxe one. I wouldn't have chosen a deluxe tractor, but it was a good deal on a used one. Uh, stay tuned for a review on this one because this has been a fantastic tractor. We're getting a hoop house from the close soil conservation service i've been approved for that finally so that'll be going up with that pile of bags is in the spring and i was going to get like a 90 footer but now i'm down to like a 14 by 16 because i just don't have the need for it anymore I made it all this out 
here and built this this rock wall. Uh, that was a lot of rocks. Not gonna lie to you. A lot of trips down back. And then in the process, I had to rebuild these steps. These were the original steps to the house, and uh, so they're about 200 years old. And I've just been fixing those up. I got to take care of the patio furniture, uh, and then I put drainage in here because the whole bottom of this was rotting off. So I got some work to do here next year. All right, so uh, but I haven't even started yet, so I'm gonna go in the barn and uh, figure out what we're gonna do in here for a lambing lambing pen. And normally I would have had the lambs right here and this is the east so the old the old dairy farms up here in Maine they always built the barns uh, south to north uh, with the east on the broad side so they would get the the sun um, but the only thing that's going to be for animals is obviously the chickens and the shed on the back and then underneath so I've got to put a stall here a pen this is on the northwest side, so it's always the cold side. So I'm going to have to hang a couple heat lamps. And uh, this was all full of hay, and I'm getting rid of the hay now, so this is the first hay to go. Plywood, some most of that. Uh, and I think I'm going to take that feed panel and over here. I've also got some uh, cattle panels I can put in, 16-foot cattle panels. So I've got to build something here. Uh, with some heat and um, obviously I have to put the heated buckets and everything else so uh, I'm kind of just planning that out in my head and if you've been with me when I build stuff it's kind of like a go as you go um, on the fly here so yeah that's just how it runs so I know one of the first things I need to do is uh, find some plywood which I, I know I have some let's go find it I got a bunch of sheets Pop. Here's the old uh, hay trolley. So they just bring the hay up. That thing right there would drop down and they'd pile the hay up here with it. Obviously it was lifted by horses. And I like to walk on the joists up here. So I don't um, go through the floor. old farms it's just to be fixed and uh, you know, there's only so much money to go around and I'm gonna do a video in the near future about like I'm gonna call it intermediate homesteading because there's so many people have written or made videos on getting started on a homestead there's not really much there to tell you about what to do once you've started let's say you got some animals a piece of land and then there's a lot of stuff that people haven't really talked about you know the starry-eyed stuff is fun but the reality is not really so fun sometimes and people like starry-eyed stuff they don't like they don't like uh, you know what really is going on because it's not fun they don't blame them. so it's a nice concrete area and it's I've got a chute there to let the sheep in so it's a great holding pen. It's a great place. Uh, if I have to put animals somewhere, so I kept this. Uh, but it's going to be nice to have all that hay out, so I'll have access to it again. So I think what I'm going to do is take this plow, actually this particle board or whatever you want to call it, chipboard, wafer board, you know. It's, I couldn't tell you why I have it. But I do. This is Advantech. Oh, so this is this is the good stuff. Advantech structural. Huh. I had a sheet of Advantech. This stuff's like eighty dollars a sheet now. This resists moisture. And interesting, I have this whole sheet of Advantech. So I'm for sure gonna put this in here because that's exactly what I want. 
is to get the draft off. So I'm just going to go through here and put in a few inch and a quarter screws to kind of hold it to that board. A few years ago we had a power problem here and it fried a bunch of stuff in one of the things that got fried was my DeWalt charger and some of my batteries. So I bought these knockoff ones and they work, but they don't fit in just right. So you need a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, handy to uh, get yourself in and out. And obviously I need to have the right bit. Uh, grew up in the 30s during the depression. He said a lot of times they were so poor, they didn't even know there was a depression. Which, you know, I've heard that from some other people too. But the point being is dad to throw stuff away. So by default, I generally don't. And then what happens is I get frustrated with something, throw it away, and then like, uh, you know, three days later, want to know where I put it. I can't find it anymore because now I need it. So consequently, I'm a hoarder of sorts. Now I'll save like garbage, but things that might come in handy. <clears throat> like a lot of people would just chuck all the extra pieces of wood. I don't really know what my future holds here. What happens when I'm too old to run the place. <clears throat> and that's something Some of the equipment I use uh, show it often in my videos, and this is a premier uh, one a few years ago. And the premier one has some stuff that I really like and some stuff that I don't. But this is one of the things that I do like, and the reason being is these are like all these are all ABS plastic, and there's a shield on it here. Uh, and then I usually try to buy their light bulbs because they're not soldered. They um, they what happens with some of the light bulbs when they when they die is they come disconnected and then they hang them by a filament and then if that fails then it goes into your stall and if it's got hay or something that's a fire trap well if it separates from that you got this cage um, so then you can hang it so I usually end up cutting pieces of chain to to do it this one here I ended up altering the cord I needed a longer cord for the application I was using at the time so I just made the cord longer and I'm not going to tell you to do that unless you know what you're doing. Um, so I made the cord longer, and I don't ne necessarily need a long cord here, but I do have one. So I've got to get a piece of chain out, and we'll hook this up. Now the thing is, I always buy... I get these little short sections to chain like three feet, and three feet's about right because uh, it's usually the right height, and if it's not, I just hook two of them together. So I either use a carabiner or a, a double snap. So I'll hang this up real quick stuff in bulk like you can buy a whole long chain for like eight bucks so what i'll do is uh, hook this and then i typically will run this cord back up and also it doubles as a place to hang on to for a ladder i'll double double back up and then all you have to do is just pull that up and now you've got wire management and so i like the um and i don't have it on here anymore there was the chew the chew guard it's not so bad with the sheep because it's up kind of high and the sheep are short but with cows they tend to want to gnaw on it and the sheep find that um sorry when i have the calves the calves see the heat and they oftentimes and I confuse this as their mom, so they'll they'll bunt it, which is another good reason for having the, the guard on there. Um, I try to keep it above the, the 
height of the of the sh of the cows. Uh, so, but they they grow, and then you just have to try to keep ahead of it so they can't put their head up, and they can reach up quite a ways, which can really damage the bulb, and also they'll start chewing on the cable, so you want to be careful of that. But basically, um, you know, cows, sheep, whatever animals, if it can go wrong, it will, and a lot of times you don't know what you don't know, and you won't know that it can go wrong until it's already gone wrong. And there's not one of us who can sit here and tell you all the things that go wrong because um, things will go wrong that you've never had happen before. Like, I generally get the calves bucket trained about now, and um, one of the calves cut his ear. I've never had that happen before, but he cut his ear. So you have to have first aid stuff around to deal with it because it was bleeding pretty well. He had his collar and it got kind of stuck and well I guess first let's go for a little walk because I don't think I have heated buckets up here. I think I have to go down to the pump house. But we'll look. They're blue. I think mostly. Uh, I got a green one too but they're not here. They're in the other building. So it's a short walk. Shot walk. So I got this cord here going to that because I'm going to put a trouble light and I've got an extension with the heater. So I have to put the heater in. And these guys all think it's game on. Obviously it's not. But they don't know that. Every time they see me they just think it's lunchtime. You can see Luna is looking like she's getting there and well, she's not bagged up yet but she's Jamungus and then Violet looks like a block and she's not bagged up but usually babies but you can see she's looking pretty stout and Violet this is the ram he's gonna go to freezer camp in January and Dexter so we got a new kitten and caused Dexter and Pearl to up their game on catching rats and mice but anyway here's an example I made this like I rebuilt this this window I built all the pieces again uh, routed it made it nice but the animals decided, uh, you know what, there's a window there. Let's see if we can put our head through it. So, that's just how animals are. Also, I bought one of these. It's out of the window. Oh, that's a stupid thing. I went and bought another one because I didn't think I had it. But now I see it. I should have came here first. But, okay, so what was I starting with? I bought this because um, it was supposed to be all surge protected and everything. First thunderstorm we got fried. And I just have these cheap uh, Zeriba or Zeriba. I've got two or three of these, and knock on wood, they have never failed. They've been fine. And I'd say these guys are done. Nasty. All right, so, yep, let me just shorten this up a little bit. We need here. I need there's a heated dog waterer. I need that for the cats. And here's just a heated bucket. I'm gonna need two of those. <coughs> here's the other part of the window that I I made. I kept pullets in here for a couple years. Um Initially, it's fine in here, but uh, there's no shade, and with just the one window, even if I open the hatch there, it just got way too hot in here for them, so I ended up discontinuing that. So this little heated right here is good enough. I guess I have two or three of them, but this little one should be fine. Now, when I first started doing animals here, there were seven, there were seven box stalls. In the barn and I had a bucket 
uh, a hay feeder and a grain uh, thing for every one of them. So there were seven. And that's why there's so much stuff here because um, I had to use it for all the animals. So this is the stock tank de-icer. There's a float. Works. But I went and bought another one because I was like, I knew I had one, but I couldn't find it. And see, this one right here is for metal tanks. So, yeah, it works great, but if you have a plastic tank and you use it, you just burned a hole in the side of your, your tank. Uh, so, that's bad. This clip that goes with that. So I need two buckets. And I'm sure you're like, why do you just chuck all this stuff in here? Well, Ah, I'm guilty, I guess. Part of it is I just tell my kids to pack it up and go put it down here, and let's just blame them for now. It sounds good. We'll see what it's like when the kids aren't here anymore, but, because they mostly aren't. But I still have a couple. So, well, that's a flat bat bucket. Do I have another flat one? I think I do. Round, round. This giant one's flat. This is huge. It's huge. Um, let's go back in. So I need to need this, and that, and that, and that cord. I chicken wire. Well, there it is. Never know where I put chicken wires. I would have thought I would have put it down in the other building where the fencing is, but um, nope, it's right there. This is like the last building I check. It's like I walk by it a thousand times a day. It feels like here's another flat one. But I always forget what actually I put in here because most the only thing that goes in here is the the charger and uh. It's like a waypoint for the electricity to come through. But I do put all this stuff in here because I don't need it all summer. And then I forget. And, well, anyway, you get the drift. But I guess I got to build a door next year. This was the original pump house. There was a little hit miss engine in here. There was a well down back, and the pipe goes from down back up to the house. And there's a tea that goes into the barn but there's also a giant steel tank in the, in the house in the basement where they had a hand pump and they could just pump it up into the house so we're switching to these uh, Angus Jersey crossbreeds and so they're, pretty, they're quite a bit bigger. And this one's, he's a year old. These guys are all the same age, and I'm sorry about the bells. It's like, well, here's, here's the thing. There's 60 acres here, but it's surrounded by thousands of acres of um, protected land. And it's all woods. And the cows are brown. And usually if they're gonna get out, they get out at night and they get out this time of year and they tend to get out when it's raining so if you've ever tried to find a brown cow in the woods at night in the rain good luck so they have bells and it makes it really easy to go find them and for YouTube videos uh, you a lot of times I don't necessarily hear them because I'm used to them but then when, when it goes to the video it's like, oh my god, what is that noise? And then people click off and stop watching. Because I always try to be cognizant of where I'm shooting video. But the problem is the animals are friendly. And uh, they for sure like to... Um, they for sure like to come where I am. So, I'm going to have to wash these. I'll wash these later. But... Uh, so here's the stock tank de-icer. We're going to need to put that in soon. So we'll put this over here. Uh, and then the clip holds it 
onto the tank. And then we've got the pet bowl for the cats. So we'll put water in it and plug this in out here, usually over there by the workbench area. The two calves will get one of these and the sheep will get one. So they can share. I don't need to put one in it. In, but so there's these drop downs. Uh, I had a stall here. Uh, and right, right, right there was another divider. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the back. So I had eight stalls. Um, and, and when I first moved here, I, every night we put all the sheep in and all the cows in. We let them out during the day and put them in every night. So the whole side of the barn here was and they all got fed here and I just liked having them in. They were, I wasn't sure about the coyote situation. I wasn't sure about a lot of things. So I brought them in every night and then as time progressed, I just, uh, so they don't have that anymore. But uh, what was I going to do? This chain for them. These big carabiners are the easiest. I'll bring you over here. So we'll be wrapping this. All right. So you can see what I got going on here. Uh, I'll be able to get in right here, put water in, and this is their grain. Um, so why did I put this here and that there? Is a good question. Um, I think I need to move it because what's going to happen is they're going to get grain in the water or water in the grain or they're just, the chain's going to break it off. So there's only a couple screws in there, so we'll move that real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over and down. I know the sheep can reach that, but I want it so when the lambs get, get going, they'll be able to reach it as well. And let's see. Half expect. Half expected them not to come out because they're rusty. And then for sheep, we'll probably put this. Well, I gotta take my son to the dentist. I just heard the bus come. Um, got two kids left. They're seniors this year, and. They're moving on, and it's uh, kind of a mixed feelings. I'm glad that my wife and I have time to do things without the kids, uh, but the labor is going to be gone. But there's a lot of pros and cons, and, and the kids that are gone now, uh, I see them a little bit, um, but it's definitely an adjustment to have them not be here every day because we had six kids here all the time. Uh, it was chaos, but it was fun. And, uh, you know, everything just seemed like it went pretty well as far as, I mean, there were, there were hiccups as there would be, but, but everything went pretty well, I think. So I hope that this has been, uh, I hope this has been helpful in some ways. And I don't want people to be discouraged, but I also don't want people uh, to listen to people who are blowing sunshine up their ass because uh, there's a lot of that out there. And, you know, a lot of these people just have new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. And you're like, whoa, where did all this crap come from? Well, I'll tell you what. YouTube pays for some of it. And, and uh, you know, I'll be honest. On a good month, I'll make 200 bucks off YouTube. And it all depends on how many views you get. It depends how long they watch. It depends on how many advertisers you get. There's a lot of variables in there. So I figure 200 bucks a month um, is enough to buy a few things here and there. And uh, that's, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. There's, there's a lot of YouTubers that have a half a million subscribers and you can do the math and figure out how many people have watched by views and see how much money they make off YouTube and then they put it back into their, their farm, which is great. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. I think it's great. I think it's great because uh, they're still ultimately working with animals and, and farming, but don't let them fool you and uh, think that they're going to make all this money off the farm because customers are hard to get hard to keep uh, when you get a name for yourself uh, you can keep them usually but sometimes people will go places that are cheaper 
uh, just because. So anyway, I'm happy. I got uh, I usually have about 25 laying hens, about 25 or 30 uh, meat birds. Usually run about a half a dozen sheep, four or five cows, uh, about a half a dozen turkeys. I got rid of the waterfowl because even though they're so cute and so fun in the summertime, they make a horrible mess in the wintertime because you can put the geese and ducks in with the chickens, but they will slop the water everywhere. And they will drink a little bit out of the drinkers, but the ducks need to preen their um, their feathers to keep them water resistant. There's oil, they need to do that, so they need water. Um, so I don't have any waterfowl anymore, even though I, I, I do like them. We've had bunnies. Uh, I tried unsuccessfully to breed bunnies to eat. Uh, that didn't work out well. They just didn't. They'd have bunnies and then not be good mothers, so didn't do that for very long. Uh, I tried making all my own hay, uh, which I still kind of do. Um, and my brother-in-law bales it for me. Uh, I've had four John Deere balers, so I, I know how to fix balers and how to run balers. But it ended up being a good, a good um, relationship with this because his cows are gone, and now he just wants to bale hay. So he lets me cut his fields, and he bales it, and we bring it back here. So that's why I'm back to baled hay instead of the uh, the loose hay like we did the last couple of years. Uh, what else? Barn cats are, are good. Uh, don't be afraid to use chemicals, fertilizers, and whatever else, whatnot, because they were invented for a reason. And I think as long as you are educated about what you're using and how you're using it, I think they're fine. Um, mostly, I mostly use manure to fertilize, but I do sometimes put fertilizer down. I put lime. Uh, I do use grain. I use whatever medicine I need for my cows or sheep. I feel like you're, you're actually being cruel if you don't take care of your animals uh, when they're sick. So take care of the animals when they're sick. I'm just not, I'm not afraid to use technology. That's why we have it, right? So hopefully this has been uh, helpful. If not uh, very long winded, and I do apologize for that. But um, I haven't talked to you for a while. And hopefully this has filled in some of the gaps. And um, I hope you'll have a great Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before then. And thank you for watching. And I will definitely talk to you hopefully in December. Thanks.